red light district. Aubrey, how you doing? I'm gonna go over the 40 C Hunter with you. This is a 2006 40 C Hunter with brand new Mercury Verado 300s. The boat was repowered in March of this year. Uh, the owner put these brand new motors on. They've got 50 hours on them right now, and it's really uh, a very rare setup to see a used Sea Hunter with brand new motors on the market. Usually somebody will buy a used boat and then do that work themselves and keep it. So, brand new motors, and then you've got the transom of the boat. You've got a dive ladder that fits into each side of the boat so you can come onto the boat from either side. The transom here, is nice and flat so you can walk on the back of the boat behind the motors if you have to come out here while you're fishing or just to get around the motors there's no splash well to trip on in the back of the boat you've got two 55 gallon bait wells acrylic lids easy to throw a cast net dump all your bait in uh, they're oval and they're one of the best bait wells in the industry our bait wells have been known uh, industry-wide to keep bait alive for a long time. You have five rod holders in the transom. This is a cool area because you can use this for a cutting board and you can stand in this indentation while you're cutting bait. This particular boat has the full-size uh, aft sofa. This bench can fit up to 11 people on it, but it's removable. So for long fishing trips, you can just take it out and leave it at the dock. But I'm going to show you how to take it out. These pins uh, are used on each side of the, of the bar to hold it in place. Once you pull them out, the whole bench seat can slide out. have a fish that's working you all the way around. Now here in the back you've got two hatches. The hatch, is, the hatch in the back goes okay, to your so bilge. Looking inside the bilge, Aubrey, you'll notice that all of our hatches are made out of carbon fiber. And this is a very expensive way of making a hatch, but these hatches are light and they'll last forever. You'll never get a, 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 a hatch that's soft. Inside the bilge, this boat has two pump boxes, and pump boxes are a very unique way to keep water always flowing to the uh, bait well pumps. Each pump box is plumbed to your water pickups, and they keep water always flowing to your box, which in turn allows each pump to draw from that water into each bait well. I can explain that to you a little bit more once we're out running in the boat and show you how they work. But basically, it ensures that your bait are going to stay alive for a long time if you do uh, live bait in your area. Everything else in the pump, you, in the pump room here, you have two bilge pumps. You've got strainers for each bait well pickup, and you've got fuel water separators for each motor, along with fuel selector switches. These fuel selector switches will allow you to uh, draw fuel from either side of the boat. The boat has 520 gallons of fuel capacity in two tanks. You have a tank on each side of the boat. So you can decide where you want to draw from or have uh, all the motors drawing from each tank uh, so you have a nice clean fuel. Uh, bilge is very clean. Uh, everything else in here is working. There's not much that needs to be done here. Uh, I will test this and make sure it's all perfect and neat and make sure that all your pumps are working But as of right now all your bilge pumps and all your bait well pumps are working perfectly In 
this hatch you have the aft fish box. Now this is a big fish box. If I can ask the cameraman to go and look inside that fish box. This is a really big fish box. Uh, it's great for storage or as a kill box. Now one thing to remember is this whole boat is foam filled. The entire boat up to the sides is completely full of foam. So it has a lot of buoyancy but that also keeps ice really well. So your fish boxes will hold ice for a long time and it doesn't take a lot of ice to cool that box even though it's big. Walking here to the rocket launcher, you have a third bait well in the rocket launcher. Now this can also be used as a cooler but it's plumbed to be a third bait well. 80 gallons of bait capacity. You've got a cushion on top. Tackle storage on each side. I'll get you nice clean new boxes for them. Then up here on top you've got one, two, three, four, five rod holders, two, three, four cup holders. It's a nice layout right in your rocket launcher. If you come over to this side, you've got additional storage for tackle drawers here. Those are much larger tackle drawers. Then we'll come to this side. And this is open to plumbing inside the box. Uh, this can also be used to store buckets, cleaning supplies, cast nets, just easy storage inside the rocket launcher. Then the seat itself folds forward and you can store uh, some block, anything that you don't mind. Uh, if it stays in the boat, just put it here underneath the seat. Now looking at the dash, you've got your mercury binnacle control. This is an electric control. Uh, you've got your mercury individual trim for each motor, trim tab switches, and your mercury gauges on the left side. Tilt steering wheel. And inside the dash itself, you have dual E120 Gray Marine. Uh, these are color uh, units. These were installed recently. These are newer uh, Gray Marine products. You've got your stereo, dual VHF radios, so you can monitor two channels at one time. Uh, everything's working perfectly in here. Your VHF works fine. Your stereo works perfectly and both Raymarines, the sonar works perfectly, the radar needs to be replaced and we'll discuss the radar later but that's the one thing that needs to be replaced on the boat. Now looking forward you've got a three-sided enclosure your hardtop is carbon fiber this is actual carbon fiber cast through the entire hardtop keeps this hardtop light uh, speakers in the hardtop, you have lights in the hardtop and all your lights, your pumps, and everything are controlled by these dash switches located in the dash. And those dash switch, switches are located in a hidden area so that they last a long time and stay out of the elements. Now on each side of the boat you have a wash down, salt water wash down on the left side, fresh water wash down on the right side. You've got 50 gallons of fresh water capacity. That's a lot of fresh water. Moving forward. Inside the console, you have a storage bin, a toilet that leads to a pump that can flow directly overboard or into a holding tank, and you have controls for your batteries. Very simple console area, great for storage. Uh, it, it stays very dry. It's wet right now because they just washed the boat, but you can, uh, you can keep things dry inside the console. You have additional rod holders along the console. On the other side of the console you have more rod holders. On this side of the console you have your input for your battery charger. And then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rod holders on this side, on the starboard side of the boat. You also have a cooler or storage in the front compartment of the console.
Now here on the front part of the boat, uh, very simple flat deck layout, but you have a lot of storage in here. The side compartments are mostly going to be used for storage, whereas your center compartments are going to be your big fish kill boxes. Needless to say, Aubrey, if you could fill all of this with fish, you've had a good trip. These side compartments, you're probably going to store your cleaning brushes, your gaffs, uh, dive tanks can be stored in there. Uh, it, there's just a lot of storage. Okay, Aubrey, here boat. at the very bow of the boat, you've got two access hatches to your anchor. This side just has access to your rope. This side has a holder for your anchor. Now this gentleman has a removable spotlight here in the front. I don't know if you need that or not, but I'd probably just remove that light. That way you have a nice clean deck. If you need to stand up there and throw a cast net, perfect area to throw from. Looking throughout the boat, when I take it back to the factory, I'm probably going to have to replace most of these latches so they fit properly. Uh, maybe put some shocks on the hatches so that they uh, stand straight up instead of lay all the way over. That depends on whether you want it to lay all the way down or at least stay up. Uh, looking forward, that radar needs to be replaced completely. I'll give you a quote on replacing that radar. Here I am in the upper driving station, Aubrey. There's a hatch door with a latch. When you unlatch it from down below, you can just climb through the station. You've got controls, steering, and a small compartment here. Uh, there is a digital readout for speed here, but I don't think you need that. Uh, you've got outriggers, dual antennas for your VHF radio. And it's just an easy way to get some elevation. Great for sail fishing, uh, trolling for dolphin on debris. This is probably our most popular upper station. More popular than a tower because it's very easy to get back down and get up and down pretty quickly. Uh, and I'll get some filming. Uh, we'll film driving from up here so you can see your vantage point. Okay, Aubrey, to start the boat, I turn the battery switches in the console to the on position. Then you have three keys located here at the bottom. Then you can go ahead and watch the motors crank up. Go ahead and turn the electronics on. All we have to do is turn these two buttons on and hit OK. So we have our depth finder and our chart plotter. We can zoom in and out. Let's go through all the speakers. Good sound from the radio. Okay, Aubrey, 
what I want to show you now is we're here in the canal leaving the marina. This is about a hundred foot canal with both uh, boats on each side. And I want to show you how well this boat reacts to steering with the throttles only. And basically I'm going to spin the boat in this canal just using the throttles just like you would on a big boat. Uh, I've got the motor straight. I'm going to put one in forward. Just let her spin around. just by pulsating the motors we completely spun the boat around even going into the wind and I'll continue to spin it in a 360 degree turn spun the boat around 360 degrees in about 30 seconds with a heavy breeze blowing at our side. Uh, very responsive boat, easy to dock, easy to operate. The uh, shifting mechanism on these rattles are extremely quiet. If you can put the camera by the motors, I'll shift in and out of gear. Aubrey, we're here in some, in some open water and the first thing I want to show you about the 40 foot Sea Hunter is how little bow rise there is on this hull. When you go to get up on plane, you don't have the bow come up and you don't lose visibility. So we are in our standard seated position. I'm 5'10", Greg sitting next to me in the chair. He's about my same height. The boat is moving right now just in forward gear about 2-3 to three miles an hour. And I'm going to go ahead and give it very little gas. I'm not going to punch it. A lot of boats you have to give it full throttle just to get it out of the water. So I'm just going to walk it up on plane slowly so you can feel how easily this hull gets up on plane. That's it, she's on plane. We are doing 2200 RPM, 14 miles an hour, and we're on plane. This is perfect Wahoo trolling speeds. No trim tabs needed. I don't have my trim tabs down. We've got about 100 gallons of fuel in the boat. But even with the, gallon, with the tanks full of fuel, you'll still get the same performance as far as being able to stay on plane and running at slow speeds. Now if I can have Greg turn around and look at the wake. So that's the wake at 14 miles an hour. Very little wake, perfect, uh, perfect speed for Wahoo in my area. And it's a speed that I use on my boats a lot. I don't have to drive the boat a lot. The boat has a lot of, a lot of time to keep it straight. You don't have to drive, it's not trying to walk all over the place. Very easy to drive. I'll go ahead and bring it back down.
down on the plane onto uh, idle speed. The next thing I'm going to show you is the takeoff. This time I'll have Greg stand next to me. Because just as this boat is efficient to stay on plane at slow speeds and to keep the nose down, when we give it a lot of gas, it gets up and goes immediately. There's no hesitation. So I'm going to give it a lot of gas and watch her run. I'm going to speed her up to about 40 miles an hour and then back off. That was getting on plane from a dead stop, 42 miles an hour, and back down to zero in about 10 seconds. And that's what these boats are known for. That's why the 40-foot Sea Hunter is so popular. Amazing performance, a very quiet haul, and just easy to own, easy to drive. And this is a perfect setup for what you're going to do. Offshore fishing, long-range trips, and wide open fishing space with a lot of stuff. All right, now I'm going to film some speed footage just to get a feel for how, what the boat does at its normal cruise speed. I'm going to cruise the boat at 35 miles an hour, then I'm going to move it up to 40 miles an hour. Uh, then we'll do some higher speed stuff. I'll do some turns and we're just going to feel for the boat. Yeah. 
up here. Now I'm going to come into a turn. see the kind of chop that we're running in today. Just a very uh, normal for our area, one to two foot white cap chop in the bay. Um, in heavy, heavy seas, even seas uh, over eight feet. The beauty about this boat is you can just run it slow. You don't, hit, you don't need to use your tin, trim tabs to keep the boat uh, where it's, you have visibility over the bow. You can run it at 20 miles an hour and just slowly work your way offshore in really rough seas. The boat runs well fast and it runs well slow. Now I'm going to get some footage from up in the driving station and we'll go ahead and run her back in. Okay Aubrey, now we're up in the upper driving station. You can get a good vantage point for this elevation. We're probably about 10 feet off the water. Uh, nice open visibility to the bow. You have visibility to the motors and some of the cockpit. You actually have Greg and I standing in this space that's usually reserved for one person. So it is big enough to have two people up here. Uh, it's not as comfortable though. So I'll go ahead and put her in gear. Engine controls work fine from here. Your steering works perfect from here. Yeah, again, you have tilt steering. I'll bring her up to speed. And usually while you're up in this area, you run a little bit slower, 20 to 30 mile an hour speeds. This is just really great for trolling, sail fishing. From up here, we use this uh, vantage point to find sailfish uh, hanging around and falling on baits. And it's just a perfect area for, for uh, hunting. 